This is a peru, a small bird that feeds on grass, berries, and other plants. Being rather light, the peru is unable to defend itself against predators and usually flees, as doing otherwise would result in becoming food. This is achieved through their excellent flying capabilities. This peru, however, has none, as he is only a few weeks old. Usually, the parents care for their children until they are capable of doing so for themselves, but his are nowhere to be seen. Fortunately, he seems to have got the hang of things rather quickly. An adult Pero stands at just over 5 feet tall, exceptionally small when compared with most other creatures, and thus incredibly vulnerable. Throughout adolescence, the Pero develops bulbs which allow it to enter a state of invisibility, allowing them to hide from predators. Here we have our young male Pero. He is eating grass. Grass is a large part of the Pero's diet, as it is incredibly abundant. The Pero is at its most vulnerable when eating, as they are often completely engrossed in their meals. Nearby, a Sarkius has caught its scent. As the Pero eats, the Sarkius creeps up. When he realizes that the Pero is distracted, he bolts. The Pero hears the footsteps of the danger from behind and begins to run. Since he is young, he does not have much practice with his wings, and opts to run away instead of potentially failing to take off. The Pero is fast, but the Sarkius is persistent. He must hide away. The Pero comes across a small cave at the edge of the jungle and escapes from certain death. The Sarkius has run right past him. He's safe, but the Sarkius returns. He's located the Pero with his heightened sense of smell and is now trying to eat him. Luckily for the Pero, the Sarkius is far too large to get in, but still, he stays. He knows the Pero can't lie here forever and decides to play the waiting game. After a few seconds, the Sarkius realizes that the waiting game is boring and decides to leave. Terrified, the Pero slips out of the cave, keeping a close eye on his surroundings. As you can see, Scenario can be a deadly place for a young creature like our Pero. His lack of parents has left him fighting an uphill battle against the harsh environment, where his chances of making it to adulthood are slim. Months later, the Pero is still alive. He's larger and more confident now, but not enough to fly long distances. His previous run-ins with predators have made him far more cautious than most, and will likely help him survive for a long time. Tired, the Peru decides to rest, and enters his cave. As he sleeps, something approaches. Like the Peru, the Quipbrick has the ability to appear invisible, in order to hide itself from predators or sneak up on prey. The Quipbrick enters the cave where the Pero rests, ready to devour. At the last second, the Pero hears the Quipbrick and wakes up. He darts out of his home and runs from the Quipbrick. He is close behind, and if the Pero doesn't act now, he will surely become lunch. The Pero takes a leap and flies off higher than he's ever flown before. With his newfound ability for flight, he glides to new territory, hoping to explore different regions. The Quipbrick is unhappy. This young theropod is a Gartokus, a deadly predator with a powerful bite. Not the ideal target for a Pero to annoy. Our Pero circles the Gartokus, taunting him. Angry, the Gartokus attacks, only just missing the Pero. This was too close for comfort, and the Pero must escape. He flies away and decides to hide in a cave. He crawls into the sticks and leaves, hoping that the Gartokus will not see him. But it seems that a different threat has arrived. A Kendall, one of the last of her kind. This mother has returned to her nest and knows that something isn't right. He must think fast. For the first time, he enters an invisible state. As he slowly creeps away from the Kendall, only his footprints are visible. A smarter creature could use this and hunt the Pero, but the Kendall is too stupid. Humbled by this experience, the Pero flies off. At three years old, the Pero has reached maturity. Now fully grown, it's time to reproduce. He sits on the rocks, preparing to search for a mate, when he spots a fellow Pero. He decides to follow it. The two creatures fly over to the volcanic island, where a group of Pero are gathered, each one ready to mate. Our Pero lands. His orange coat makes him stand out amongst the crowd, and it seems like he has got the attention of a female. She makes her way up to him, but there is a challenger. 
This Pera was larger and more ferocious than the rest. His size and dark colouring makes him more attractive to females, and so our Pero must prove his worth. The rivals square up, and the largest Pero begins his dance. Usually, the Pero would take turns dancing until one of them backs away, but our Pero has never seen this sort of behaviour before. After the rival male is finished, they all wait for his response. Instead of dancing, he attacks. This seems to be more effective than the dance, and the Pero group celebrate. The female Pero approaches him, and a new couple fly away together to start their family. A few weeks later, the Pero returns to his mate when his eggs hatch. Oh dear, it seems that our Pero is not fond of his children. The air becomes tense in the Pero den as a new father becomes more and more frustrated with his situation. He never had love as a child, and is unable to provide it for his own children. The parents take their young out to the feeding area, the family bickering and attacking each other on the walk. The unhappy family eats. A Chisudo approaches, ready to kill. This catches the mother Pero's eye, and she immediately leaps in front of her children, ready to defend them with her life. The father, however, slowly backs away. Greatly offended, the Pero mother focuses her anger on him. This was a cowardly move, and even the Chisudo seems to agree. It is clear that she does not want a pathetic partner like him, and the family send him away. Forced into exile, our Pero finds a spot in the jungle. He ponders. Deep in thought, the Pero wonders what he should do with the remainder of his life. He sits and thinks for hours, and then he has an idea. Just before he can take off, his spine is crushed by the forearm of a Dilatura. Writhing in pain, the Pero begs for death, and the Dilatura delivers. She takes a bite of his carcass before deciding that she doesn't like the taste. Besides, a more appetizing meal is right in front of her. She abandons the remains of the recently departed Pero, and over the next few days, it rots. It seems that this Pero died for nothing. What a waste.